Hey guys, so I officially decided to jump onto this bandwagon, but I was a big fan of The Witcher 2 and The Witcher 3. I never played the first one, but I was a huge, huge fan of those second two games. And so I, alongside I think everybody else, just felt really surprised to see that this really beloved and respected developer could release such a mess of a game. So there have already been a lot of videos breaking down exactly what is wrong with Cyberpunk 2077, and I didn't want to do exactly that in this video. I do go into some of the bigger flaws with the game, but mostly what I wanted this video to serve as is kind of a, a guidebook for CD Projekt Red, you know, if they watch this video, which I doubt. But this doesn't have to be the end of the story for Cyberpunk 2077, and I certainly hope that it's not. I also just wanted to say a quick thank you to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. I appreciate any and all support that I can get on this channel to help me put more time and effort into making these videos. If you do enjoy the video, I hope you leave it a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to see more stuff like this in the future. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Wait the f*** up, Samurai. We have a city to burn. I really promise that we'll deliver a truly outstanding futuristic RPG setting, setting totally new standard in the genre, both in terms of the gameplay, but also on the tech side. You will get an intelligent, non-linear, gripping game with cutting-edge graphics. Well, what, what more could you want, guys? Cyberpunk is a mature, visceral work in progress, and as you just saw, we are working hard to make Night City the most work-in-progress piece of shit. If you've spent any time on the internet in the last few months, you've likely heard of the game Cyberpunk 2077. It's the long-awaited follow-up to CD Projekt Red's massively successful The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which went on to become so beloved that it boosted sales of the original novels that they were based upon, and led to the development of a successful TV show. Suffice to say, when CD Projekt announced a new RPG set within a futuristic open-world cyberpunk universe, we felt we were in good hands. But after eight years in development, hundreds of pre-release awards, and near unprecedented levels of anticipation, and this is what we got. Please! The game is virtually unplayable on previous gen consoles despite the developers telling us otherwise, with a litany of bugs and crashes even on PC, but as many have pointed out, the game's issues stretch far beyond a few glitches or performance issues. A lot of content that was promised was cut, story choices seem to have little impact, there's not much variety in the life path options, the AI feels unfinished, and countless other serious issues that impact the world and sense of immersion. This is obviously not how everyone feels, plenty of people have been enjoying the game so far, and I'm not here to try and ruin that for anyone. But regardless of one's own personal experience, it's clear that the release did not go as the developer intended, with the game being pulled from retail, countless people asking for refunds, and even threats of legal action against the company. But none of this is completely new to the world of video games, and there's one developer in particular who went through almost exactly the same thing. It wasn't too long ago that Sean Murray and everyone else at Hello Games was in the hot seat when releasing the game No Man's Sky. Much like Cyberpunk 2077, No Man's Sky was followed by a tremendous amount of pre-release hype. The first trailer debuted at VGX in 2013 and immediately became one of the most highly anticipated games of its time, with Sean Murray giving interviews to video game journalists and mainstream media alike, captivating the world with this seemingly impossible concept. You get a sense of the scale of what we're building, so every and one each of these one of those is dots. a star system that you can visit. Yeah, just like the one we were at, with planet-sized planets, with life and ecology and everything else. You know, I thought Morgan Freeman was God. <laughs> you, were, you were actually my second God that I'm having <laughs> yeah. on the show. An infinite universe to explore at will, with trillions of planets and star systems all procedurally generated, where each player could approach the game exactly as they wanted. 
But there was always a sizable crowd who thought all of this sounded too good to be true. And when the game finally released in August of 2016, it seemed that those people were right. Players reported the standard bugs and crashes that plague most games' initial release, which were often severe enough that on their own could tarnish the game's reputation, but what caused the majority of the controversy were all of the missing features, and sometimes what felt like downright lies from the developer. And we don't want to tell people how to play the game. They can play it whatever way they want. It wasn't some level that we built or something like that, even though I think it looks quite nice in places. You know, it's a procedurally generated world. And you guys are literally building your own like massively multiplayer world that's procedurally right. generated. And uh, are there, is there anything that this game doesn't have? <laughs> Most of us loading up the game for the first time felt a sense of awe and wonder, looking to the stars and their endless possibilities. But what we got was a buggy, often laughable mess that frequently crashed with many of the most enticing features of the game notably missing. There was no multiplayer. This supposed mystery that led to the center of the universe was just a fancy disguise for New Game Plus. The gameplay was a hollow imitation of Minecraft with all of the grind and none of the reward. And if you managed to navigate its clunky and cumbersome interface well enough to repair your ship and travel to a few planets, you found pretty quickly that most of them looked virtually identical, and while the scale was always something to appreciate, there wasn't much to do within all of that space. Countless trailers and gameplay demonstrations that offered us a glimpse at something truly incredible. But this is what we ended up with. Again, much like Cyberpunk 2077, it wasn't so much the glitches that bothered people. We expect them in games, and sometimes even grow to love them. The problem was the massive disparity between what we were shown and what we were given, in terms of its actual game design. There's a reason that The Witcher 3 was met with such an overwhelmingly positive, critical, and community response, and there's a reason Cyberpunk's has been mixed, to put it gently. Both games had issues at launch that needed patching, but in spite of that, one went on to become arguably the most acclaimed game of the generation, and the other has been mired in controversy since its release. So I think it's clear there's more going on than just some performance issues. People expected more from the game because, frankly, we were promised more. But if No Man's Sky has taught us anything, it's that no game is beyond saving. Hello Games have essentially set a new benchmark for what can be done after a game's release. The only other times we've seen this much post-release community support are for games with a thriving online community, or something with a subscription service or some other form of additional revenue like loot boxes, because it's not easy and it's certainly not cheap to maintain that much support for a game that people have already paid for. But Hello Games wanted to make No Man's Sky into the experience that we had all hoped for. The Foundation update added new game modes and base building, the Pathfinder update introduced exocrafts and ship specializations, Atlas Rises completely overhauled the story and added a new mission system, and Next finally brought us the multiplayer we had always wanted. And over the years, they've eventually improved everything from the UI to player quality of life, customization of your character or base, with more planet variety than ever before, taller mountains and deeper oceans with more complex alien life, new types of weather, and even the long-awaited sandworm, as well as the many technical or artistic updates to improve the game's textures or lighting, frame rate, and load times. And even four years after the game's release, they show no signs of stopping. Their most recent substantial update just came out on November 25th, which ramped up the graphical quality, expanded the multiplayer to allow up to 32 players, and added crossplay functionality. Given its four-year-long post-release history, it should surprise no one that they recently took home the Game Award for Best Ongoing Game. The Game Award goes to No Man's Sky. Um, I was not expecting that. <laughs> This is something truly unprecedented. They went from being threatened with lawsuits for false advertising to building a passionate and growing community of people who truly love their game. Obviously, I think we can all agree that this shouldn't become the industry standard. Developers shouldn't release what amounts to an early access game with a full retail price tag in the hopes that they'll just fix it in post. But I'd prefer to see CD Projekt take this as an opportunity to right their wrongs in the same way that Hello Games did rather than see the game abandoned in its current state. 
Because in movies or in TV, if there are serious enough issues with the story or the characters, there's no amount of recutting that's going to fix it. And if you screw up badly enough, you might just destroy a legacy. But a video game is a bunch of code that can be altered theoretically forever if the developer so chooses. And if a tiny little indie studio can manage to bring so much new content into a game as massive as No Man's Sky, there's no reason a giant AAA developer like CD Projekt couldn't do the same. And conveniently enough, Hello Games have already laid out the path for how this is best approached. No Man's Sky was this crazy, innovative, ambitious game. It was a procedural universe, something nobody had done before. But our release was also one of the most intense and dramatic that I think the games industry has seen. We faced uh, some really difficult challenges. Everything that you can imagine from like the worst of the internet, we hit. Uh, but two things forced me to get out of bed every morning. One was that we could see something that others couldn't. We could see hundreds of thousands of people playing the game every day. The second thing that really made me want to get out and fight is that the narrative around games that launch like this becomes about the team being maybe uh, dishonest or lazy or something like that. I've never met a lazy developer. Uh, you know, I've probably made bad mistakes in my time, but the team, the fucking team at Hello Games are incredibly talented and so incredibly hardworking. And so I felt like their legacy deserved to be correct. So at first, the intensity of that feedback was overwhelming, but I decided you either had to hide or you had to face it. So I did something that I wouldn't recommend, but I decided to kind of drink from the firehouse. The second most negative cohort of, of players was actually people who had played the game for about 100 hours in the first week. And their feedback was actually incredibly useful. 37% of people were stopping playing or frustrated in playing just because they didn't like the inventory system. And suddenly you're like, that, that I can fix. I could sit down at my computer and I can fix that. Not just that, I agree with you. And now we know what we're doing. We're back making games for people who want to play them. You don't have to work to satisfy every whim of every player, but when a vast majority of the community is asking for the same thing, it shouldn't be too difficult to decide what to prioritize. Functionality should come first, anything that stands to hamper the experience on a technical level should be the most important thing to start with, but they shouldn't stop there. While it's clear that many are enjoying the game as it is, none of the suggested updates from the community would in any way taint that experience. If people are enjoying the combat, or the driving, or exploring the vast landscape of Night City, then populating the game with better AI or more significant player choice would only improve that experience and they could release these updates in similar compartmentalized packages. Each of No Man's Sky's updates served a specific purpose, and each offered new functionality as well as performance optimization. So with enough time, I see no reason why CD Projekt couldn't improve on everything that's plagued its release. Despite its controversy, it's still been incredibly successful. They have one of the most talented dev teams out there, and considering how well this approach worked for Hello Games, I think it's clear that it could do the same for CD Projekt. Because look at No Man's Sky today. What once felt too good to be true then turned out to be worse than we ever feared has come back with arguably the greatest redemption arc in gaming history. Someone at Valve who was a fan of the game said to me, what you do now is more important than what you say. And I can't tell you how many times I sat down to write a blog post to explain to people our side of the story or calm the storm or set things right. However, as a developer of a released game, I think that there is only one thing that's credible, and that's your actions. We decided to talk to the community through patch notes alone. Now, obviously, yes, listen to the community. It's very important um, for problems, not necessarily for solutions. Uh, we changed the game radically, and we changed it in line with our own vision, right? And there's something really pure and simple about that. And for me, over the last few years, I've learned to love tending my garden. No Man's Sky for me became the perfect outlet, right? There's this huge universe filled with players and somewhere where anything could exist. They could have simply fixed the bugs and called it a day, but they went above and beyond to work to make their game into something that I think is even better than what was initially promised to us. So maybe I'm being naive or overly optimistic, but I just want to believe that CD Projekt will do the same. 
because there is no other game that can offer what Cyberpunk 2077 promised us. A massive open world RPG in a cyberpunk universe with complex characters and player choice guiding an intense and action-packed narrative, with Keanu Reeves to top it off if the rest of that wasn't enough. That is the game we wanted, and considering just how good The Witcher 3 was on even less advanced hardware, I think it's understandable why so many people feel let down. Because I think it's fair to say that the game hasn't yet fulfilled its potential. But it could, and I hope in time that it eventually will.